Hello Smell friends and welcome back to the channel. Now before we go into uh, this week's uh, video, I just want to remind you guys that I've moved to a uh, two week uh, upload and it's now going to be on a Wednesday instead of Friday and at 6.30. The reason being is going back to work I'm struggling to get um, basically everything done. So I'm trying to make things a little bit easier for myself, a little bit less uh, stressful uh, as well. Um, according to YouTube, Wednesday evening is apparently the best time for me to upload. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so just to let you just let you guys know, I think I mentioned it in the last video, but just uh, obviously it's been a while since <laughs> the video. So yeah, it's just letting you guys uh, know, and I'm hoping to do uh, a update video uh, soon so this week's uh, video is uh, a commission build and it's thanks uh, to Kevin for this one um, and it's uh, Tamiya's 148th Zero Zika um, so yeah so it's been an absolute fantastic build and again thanks Kevin uh, for this build and also asking me uh, to do this model uh, for you um, but as I says, it's been a amazing build and it's been nice for a very straightforward and easy build. It's been a while uh, since I've had one where everything just fits really nicely and there's been no issues whatsoever. So, with that said, um, we'll get straight into the video. So, grab yourself a brew and a bicky and like I said, it's going to be a nice, easy breeze through uh, build. So. I'll see you in a minute. So let's take a quick look at the kit. Now, Tamiya always, I find, do some really, really nice kits and some really nice detailing, particularly some of their newer kits. Now, this one is roughly, I think, a 2010 kit and has some absolutely fantastic uh, detailing, really nice crisp uh, panel lines, and also some really good rivet detail. As you can see here, you know, some really nice, uh, you know, like I said, crisp and really nice detail. And one of the things I quite like about this kit is the nose cowl is a solid singular piece. So we haven't got to worry about any uh, seam lines there. Now there's quite a lot of parts uh, to the kit, but to be fair, it goes together nice and easy and relatively uh, quite quickly with some really nice uh, cockpit detail, even though the majority of which you are not going to see uh, kind of I think partly because of the shape of uh, the cockpit itself and the cockpit walls The engine detail is also really nice, which is good because that is going to be quite well seen They also give you the choice of adding um, a pilot in there and he's actually quite nice and detailed where I tend to find the You know figures that they put in these aren't always so good The canopy detail is also really nice. It's nice crisp and sharp so if you do want to um, do your own masking on this, it should be relatively easy and straightforward. For decals, we also have the main standard uh, markings as well as a few small uh, detail ones as well. Also very nicely uh, put into the kit, which I do love, is some canopy masks. Now, there are some photo etched parts. This is for if you decide to have it on a carrier and have the wingtips folded up. We also have three uh, color schemes. Uh, we have the box art, and we have two other ones, which is the, uh, I'm gonna call it like a, a hemp color. And then we also have, you know, sort of like the standard uh, kind of green uh, markings that we have. So we jump straight in uh, to uh, painting the cockpit. We've got this really, really nice blue, which I absolutely love, and I'm gonna find a way of using this color again. Because I don't really do Japanese stuff. This is the first one I've ever done. Um, I have absolutely no idea why it's that colour. Um, I don't know if it's something to do with maybe some primer or something. I, I don't know. So if anybody does know, please put that in the comment section below. That'd be fantastic. We paint the uh, cockpit in XF89, which is uh, dark green too. Moving on quickly uh, to uh, putting some decals on. Uh, they struggle to conform for some reason, which is not really normal uh, for Tammy, I find. So later on, I will have to go around those and uh, paint um, around the uh, dials. 
Moving on to uh, a bit of scratch work, um, I used uh, Meeks uh, still for this, um, which you know gives us that nice sort of nice chipped uh, look. Then uh, I used a wash from AK, which is uh, the dark brown wash for green vehicles. Uh, once that's dried, as always, go around with a little bit of uh, you know white spirits, just damp on the brush, just to move any excess away and push that into you know the corners that we want to make everything pop out. Now, what I find disappointing me in this kit, even though we got a bit of photo etch, the belt is a decal. Now we're not going to use that. And as always, trust the Eddard, which you all know I like to use. We're using their seat belts for this build. Now they're very nice and easy to fit by just putting a dab of super glue uh, on the area that needs to be uh, fixed uh, to the seat. Once that has uh, dried out, all we need to do is just manipulate these uh, belts into basically whatever position that we want to be, which is one of the things I like about using these photo etched um, parts. Plus the fact there are a lot, uh, they're also pre-painted, sorry, as well. Though the fabric ones generally will sit better and probably more realistic. I just prefer, um, you know, using these uh, belts. Now, of course, they look a bit too clean. So what I will do afterwards is go over them with a bit of accent panel liner and take away any um, sort of access, excess even, sorry, can't get my words out tonight. And, um, you know, just giving them a little bit more of a sort of aged look. This is what I tend to do. Um, with all the belts I use. There we go, that's the entirety of the cockpit all uh, fitted together, which seems to be quite a standard thing for a lot of manufacturers these days and making this little modular uh, cockpit kit piece, um, which uh, fits extremely nicely uh, into the body and I don't think I even bothered gluing it into place because it fitted uh, so well. So now we move on to the engine. Um, the pistons and that I've painted, uh, again, using uh, MIG steel. Um, the front part I've used uh, the same color that's gonna be on the belly, which is XF12, um, which is uh, Japanese gray. And then what I've done is I've used uh, AK's uh, engine oil and just basically given it a good uh, slapping over it. Um, and this will, give the engine you know this nice sort of uh, you know worn look once that's dried with just a damp uh, brush with white spirits and just wiped again any excess away pushing it into all the uh, sort of recess areas again giving us a nice you know used looking engine And once all that was done, it's just time to start uh, putting everything else on. Uh, so again, nice and easy fit with uh, the tail plane, uh, the ailerons and the wing tips also were really nicely um, you know, fitted together. There was no real need for any sort of uh, shaving down or anything like that. And just everything just fitted really, really nicely. And it's been quite a while where I've had a kit that just went together really nice and simple now the only thing I decided to sort of alter myself was the pito tube so what I did was I cut the uh, sort of brass part of the pito tube off drilled a small hole in and then with some uh, brass uh, tubing I cut a small length which actually was a little bit too long uh, which I later on uh, shaved down but simply with a little bit of super glue and some really shaky hands for some reason, uh, you know, we stuck this into place. And yes, it is a little bit bent because for some reason it's supposed to be. I think it's partly because the angle uh, that the PO tube comes out, but it says it was a little bit too long. So later on, we uh, shaved that down. So now we can start moving on to painting the rest of the aircraft. Now I've painted a large chunk of the aircraft silver, which I'll get onto in a minute. 
but particularly for the undercarriage and spraying this really nice blue yet again which i really will have to find another use for it because i absolutely love it um yeah so it's just based uh, the, the bottom silver because it actually really made this uh, pop which i didn't do um in the cockpit like I said I'm using uh, XF12 uh, for the lower part of the aircraft and what I decided to do is some uh, sort of pre-shading but instead of what I'd normally do use either a white or a light grey I actually decided to use the XF12 so I just very lightly um, basically filled in um, all the panels uh, leaving obviously some uh, black around the edges to give us the you know, impression of the panel lines and panel shading and then all I did afterwards was just give it a very uh, light misting uh, with the same colour uh, something I sort of decided to sort of try out and see if it would work rather than have to you know change uh, paints uh, unfortunately because for whatever reason uh, the lighting bleached this out so you don't quite see it uh, very well uh, here I'm just really sorry about that I didn't, I didn't even notice it at the time but this actually worked really well and saved me a little bit of time now I'm doing quite a lot of uh, chipping on this the one mistake I decided to do uh, with this is only spray the silver in the areas that I was going to get chipped so around the cockpit and sort of the inner part of the wing so when I sprayed uh, the top coat on which was XF70, which is dark green two, which is a bit confusing with the other one, uh, which is the same sort of one as using the cockpit. Um, when I came to spray the sort of wing tips and the back half of the aircraft, it was considerably darker. I should have known this, and you know, proper sort of schoolboy error. So you can see there, it's a lot darker. So I did have to go with this a few more times. Now, I have just realised I've missed a step. Uh, what I did was I've put about three layers of MIGS uh, chipping fluid uh, over that silver there. Now to keep in, keep, keep in keeping with the lower half uh, of the aircraft, I added a little bit of yellow um, to uh, the green to give us this um, you know, nice bleached uh, sort of shaded look because um, of course the aircraft is going to spend a long time in the sun so it makes sense uh, to sort of bleach it up a little. Now, using this MIG fluid, which is more of what I'm used to compared to, to the hairspray technique that you've seen me do a few times before, which generally goes a little bit wrong. Again, same thing, we just add a little bit of water and using a cocktail stick, just chip away at the areas that are going to be most likely chipped away. Um, so, of course, mostly in sort of panel areas and the walkway and particularly around the side uh, wall of the aircraft. Um, as far as I'm aware, Japanese aircraft back then uh, either were not or very badly primed. So a lot of the time the paint um, was very easily um, chipped away. So that's why you tend to find a lot of people doing some extreme uh, heavy chipping. Of course, it also comes down to sort of a personal preference. Now as we're getting uh, further on through the build, I've decided to put uh, some oil stains, again using AK's uh, oil stains uh, for this. Um, and basically I slapped a large chunk of um, this paint on. It's enamel, so you're going to need, again, white spirits for this and using a damp brush um, just to, you know, take away, um, you know, either areas that you may have accidentally put on uh, that you don't want. Or just in, or as well as thinning, um, you know, these streaks out to give them a little bit more of a realistic look. Now, what I did with this one is actually I didn't even give it chance uh, to dry. I pretty much went straight in with the white spirits, 
and started to feather out uh, the oil stains. Actually worked uh, better than I actually uh, thought it would. It did take um, quite a bit away, but I was more than happy with that. And in the end, it gave me the look I, I was looking for, which was this, you know, sort of streaky, um, oily mess. Now, I did exactly the same with the uh, drop tank. This didn't quite actually work as well um, to start off with. As you can see, I did put a very heavy layer down um, to in the expectation of thin it out. Even though I didn't let it dry at all, um, the same as did as the ones underneath, I ended up taking more away than I intended to. But what I wanted to do is give a impression as well that there was a lot of sort of old... Uh, fuel stains there as well so afterwards i went over it with ak fuel stains and this turned out a lot better again i also um sort of streaked and thinned this out again with a little bit of white spirit now i have jumped a little bit far forward with this i haven't shown you doing the decals or panel lining because it's pretty much the same as what i do and you've seen me do it a few times uh, before um, but with the um the panel liner I used as pretty much always Tamiya's panel accent liner uh, using uh, the dark brown. And all we're doing now is starting to put some of the finishing details. What's also really good when you're doing lighting like these navigational lights is put a silver down and then use a clear red or green or both because of port and starboard obviously. Um, but it's always good to use uh, for the lights. One of the last little details I like to put on uh, my models is an aerial uh, on there so I've used uh, MIGS rigging uh, for this it's elasticated so it's you know it, it gives quite a lot and just tacking it in with a bit of super glue now it can take a little bit of patience to do these because sometimes you know once you stick it stuck it to one end and then you try and stick it to the aerial mast or vice versa it doesn't always want to uh, stick so it, it takes a little bit of time, especially if we're using fast super glue. Um, but once you've managed to get stuck into place, it adds a really, really nice detail. So there we go, my friends. Uh, we're nearly there. And I'll go show you the uh, finished model in just a second. I don't know if uh, Kevin realised this because I know he specifically asked me uh, for the Tamiya uh, Zero. And to be fair, I would have got the Tamiya one anyway because I said during the start the video i just find tammy it just you know so much better uh, to build the detail is always really really good and i said earlier on the only letdown really was that uh, decal seat belt instead of actually uh, a brass or photo etched one um but other than that it's an amazing kit and if you're thinking again it honestly it is well worth getting but I'm not sure if Kevin actually realizes that actually comes with a couple of figures as well as the pilot. Now, I haven't put them into the video um, because, you know, I'm not the best one to teach anybody about uh, doing figures, particularly in 48th. I struggle with 35th as it is. Um, so, yeah, so you'll see those in a second. And I've also done you a little base in there as well and a few scrap parts uh, some bits of balsa and um, plastic card that I managed to sort of knock up a really um, simple uh, base for you uh, in this one so before we get to see the finished model I just want to thank you guys ever so much for watching I do hope you have enjoyed the video so far of course if you haven't done so already um, and you're new around here please consider liking and subscribing to the channel of course if you put bell notifications on it's going to tell you when the next video is available it says i'm moving to a two-week upload on a wednesday so maybe worth knocking that bell on just to let you know when that video is available 
Also, if you'd like to um, help support the channel, there are links in the description to PayPal and buy me a coffee. I'd also like to thank people that have donated um, to those. Um, it's really much appreciated. It all comes back into um, helping the channel and uh, helping with a few other bits. Again, thanks to you guys. I've also managed to buy myself a new lamp so I can actually see what I'm doing and it actually makes things uh, a lot easier um, to film and you know be able to see without being as you may have noticed over god knows how long um, it's a little bit dim um, so I've got myself a uh, Natafi uh, daylight lamp um, so my eyes aren't straining as much and again it's easy to film and it's also thanks uh, to you guys and again it's very very much appreciated so yeah so that's it from me um, if you finish your brew and your bicky, get another one and here's the finished model. <laughs>